Do you know that the recent adaptations of The Addams Family aren't the original making of the franchise? The story goes way back several decades, when Charles Adams's genius made it to the screens, from what were meant to be just funny cartoons in The New Yorker. In its early stages, the production faced some serious challenges, which resulted in some oversights that many might have missed while watching them. Some of these oversights were just so insane that many wonder how they were allowed to happen in the first place. Join us as we take you back in time to the making of this legendary story. The original Adams Family was a cartoon strip created by Charles Adams for The New Yorker back in 1938. Early drawings depicted a macabre, eccentric family who mixed gothic and humorous elements. When these cartoons first appeared, the characters who would later be cultural icons did not have names or specific backstories. They were little more than a gathering of bizarre characters with dark yet comedic dispositions. Many times in a situation that was either quirky or surreally opposed to what their creepy mannerisms would suggest they did in those situations. It wasn't until the 1964 television adaptation of The Addams Family on ABC that named characters were developed. The producers, along with a little help from Charles Adams, hashed out for each member of the family a real character storyline, and thus was born the kooky family lineup including Gomez Adams, the gentle and passionate patriarch, Morticia Adams, the elegant and darkly alluring matriarch, Wednesday Adams, their grim and stoic daughter, Pugsley Adams, the mischievous son, Uncle Fester, the eccentric bald uncle, the family butler towering over them all, Lurch and Thing, the disembodied hand. This show was a tremendous success, merging macabre aesthetics with humor and satire, and sealed the status of the family in American pop culture. After the first series, which ended in 1966, various adaptations brought the Addams Family back. In 1973, a new animated series rejuvenated the characters, while in 1977 the original cast was reunited for the TV show Halloween with the new Addams Family. However, the serious revival of the Addams Family was in the 1990s, with two feature films, The Addams Family in 1991 and Addams Family Values in 1993. Both films, directed by Barry Sonnenfeld, brought the characters to life on the big screen with a fresh modern twist, starring Angelica Houston as Morticia, Raul Julia as Gomez, and Christina Ricci as Wednesday. The films instantly gained a huge following due to their wittily wicked sense of humor and their dazzling visuals. Most of all, Ricci's Wednesday has become a cultural icon. Her deadpan delivery and macabre humor drew praise from every quarter. The success of the films led to even more adaptations, including another live-action television series, The New Addams Family, aired in 1998, which was nowhere near as popular as its predecessors. A computer-animated film returned the family to cinemas in 2019, to a whole new generation. This version included voiceovers from Charlize Theron as Morticia and Oscar Isaac as Gomez, followed by a sequel in 2021. Most recently, the role of Wednesday Adams has been played by Jenna Ortega in the 2022 Netflix series Wednesday by creator Tim Burton. It centers on her adventures and misadventures at a preppy boarding school for supernatural children, while continuing the legacy of the Adams family in dark humor and spooky appeal. Since its inception, Adams family has always managed to get the needed audience. Every new rendition exposes yet another generation to the interesting interplay between their macabre interests and wittiness, all thanks to Charles Adams. The comic American cartoonist Charles Adams was born in Westfield, New Jersey in 1912. He created one of the most iconic families in pop culture with his timeless, unhappy doodles. Since childhood days, Adams had an appreciable fascination for the macabre and could generally be found drawing weird, bizarre figures and exploring the oddities. This weird sense of humor and his artistic style came rather early in his life influenced by the quaint charm of his hometown's gothic architecture and graveyards. Having studied at a few different art schools, Adams got a job in 1932 at The New Yorker as a cartoonist. 
His work with The New Yorker was unique for its biting wit and dark humor. Adams's cartoons are single-panel pieces depicting an absurd and ironic moment, more often than not, with a creepy or grotesque twist. The many illustrations gained him a huge following over the years, but it was the creation of that ghoulish, unnamed family in 1938 that gave him widespread attention. This family cropped up periodically in his cartoons each time doing something quirky or macabre, yet hilariously contrary to the normal suburban life one would expect from them. This combination of the common with the grotesque made Adams incomparable among the cartoonists of the time. Even though his first drawings of family members were unnamed and undefined by relationship, striking visual similarities, such as a tall, dark-haired woman who would become Morticia Adams and a short man who would become Gomez Adams, piqued readers' interest. It was less the names and histories at this beginning stage and more their bizarre behavior that defined this family. It would not be until the 1964 television adaptation of The Adams Family that the characters would receive names and specific roles. By that time, Adams's cartoons had gained enough popularity for the producers of television shows to take notice. As interest in the development of the drawn family into a live-action series gradually grew, Adams continued developing the characters with the show creators to produce what would be the now iconic lineup of characters. Adams was very instrumental in the framing of the show, where, for the most part, he made sure that it did not go out of his conceptions of a family finding delight and whimsy in what was macabre. While the success of the show made his work familiar to an even wider audience, it did make his characters household names. Over the years, Adams continued to invent new characters and further flesh out the family, adding their appeal. The unique ability to perfect his creation and keep the charm significantly contributed to the longevity of the Adams Family franchise. Aside from his work on the Adams Family, Adams continued to be a profoundly productive cartoonist, producing upwards of thousands of works in his lifetime. With his quick wit and inimitable artistic style, he's carved out an indelible mark in American humor. Charles Adams died in 1988, but his legacy runs on through the continuous adaptations and revivals relating to the Adams family. While iconic, the Adams family franchise has had its fair share of stumbles. The grounding of television series pointing at the dark humor of the original cartoons for mainstream audiences has been a core issue with this franchise. The first big hurdle came in the way of the original 1964 television series. But while it eventually developed a cult following by combining gothic images with offbeat humor, it lasted a mere two seasons before it was canceled in 1966. The reason was that it came on against very popular shows, which seemed to have more appeal. Shows like The Munsters and other shows centered around a family with a theme of spookiness were launched at roughly the same time. Though both found their fan bases, The Munsters was far more accessible and less dark. Consequently, The Munsters took off to greater heights than The Addams Family did. Also, in the mid-1960s, there came a shift in the type of television shows that networks wanted on the air, with a focus on mass appeal-oriented programs. Perhaps to a mainstream audience, the macabre humor of the Adams Family was too niche to maintain substantial ratings over a long period of time. Another issue the show faced was budgetary constraints. The set design for the program was unusual, to say the least, but highly ornate to represent the macabre, lavish nature of the Adams household. It became very expensive to continue such a high level of production, especially considering the ratings decline. In fact, picking up the franchise in later decades was not without its hiccups. For example, its animated series of 1973 never really took off, simply because the Saturday morning cartoon format could not handle the eccentric and dark humor of the original series. This format, geared for a younger audience, watered down most of the macabre elements that made the original Adams Family so unique, creating a watered-down version of the favorite characters. One of the biggest challenges came with the 1991 film adaptation directed by Barry Sonnenfeld. 
Although the movie went on to achieve a large viewership, its making was mired in problems. The studio was changed mid-production due to Orion Pictures where the rights originally lay, experiencing financial problems and thus selling the project to Paramount Pictures. There were also health issues with the cast. Raul Julia, who played Gomez Adams, was ill during filming and further strained production. The tone of the movie, which is darkly comedic yet family-friendly, was another challenge for filmmakers, though it would seem they found a working formula with the 1993 sequel, Adam's Family Values. The success of the film in the 1990s couldn't forestall more problems from cropping up. Another live-action television series, The New Adams Family, started in 1998, but lacked the spark of its forerunners and lasted only a single season. The taste of the audience had changed, and the show just could not hold its place against the new tide of television programs. While more recently, there were successful adaptations, such as the animated film from 2019 and the popular Netflix series Wednesday in 2022. The ability of the franchise to be relevant to modern minds while retaining its core essence has always been a challenge. However, these new adaptations have managed to restore the initial accolades that the story got. The unforgettable characters account for a great amount of the overall success of the Addams Family franchise, each adding a little something to the show's eerie charm and humor. Through the years, different actors have played these quirky characters and added their own interpretations in ways that have willed the family into pop culture history. Gomez is the dashing, lunatic patriarch of the family who revels in his ardor for Morticia and can be utterly fanciful. Romantic, he is an enthusiastic participant in most of his family's bizarre ventures. In the 1964 TV series, John Astin brought Gomez into the center stage with a dose of exuberance and poise. Astin gave some good energy to the character Gomez and transformed him probably into the show's most unforgettable character. Astin had a very busy career both on television and in film, but his role as Gomez is the most iconic. The role was later given to Raul Julia for the film versions of the 1990s. He brought a charismatic and deeply passionate side to Gomez. Julia's chemistry with Angelica Houston's Morticia furthered the success of the film, as Julia received across-the-board critical acclaim for his performance. Morticia, the beautiful yet macabre, elegant matriarch, is defined by her cool demeanor, gothic beauty, and undying devotion to her family. She is the still water at the eye of the Adams hurricane. In the original TV series, it was Carolyn Jones who played Morticia, perfectly catching the poise and passive aggressiveness in this character. The diversity of Jones's acting career notwithstanding, Morticia became her defining role mainly because of the way she balanced the character's dark allure with an element of warmth. Already a well-established actress when the film was made, Houston would bring an air of mystery into Morticia by balancing her beauty with inner strength. She would become one of the high points of the film. And what about the character Wednesday? She is the family's death-obsessed, morbid daughter who usually can be very deadpan and maintains a dark sense of humor in most situations. Wednesday in the 1964 series was played by Lisa Loring. However, it wasn't until Christina Ricci took up the role on the 1991 and 1993 films that we really have the stoic, death-obsessed character. Sharp-witted, iconic, and quick, Wednesday made Ricci one of the most memorable characters in the franchise. In fact, Ricci's performance is still hailed as one of the best performances in the film. Pugsley, the brother to the mischievous and partly naive, Older to Wednesday was played by Ken Weatherwax in the original series, showing a happy and lucky boy, whose only big role in the series was serving as some sort of foil to his more morbid sister. The 1990s films had Jimmy Workman play him, introducing more and more naughtiness into Pugsley without removing his innocent charm. These are some of the key characters, but every other role has also been played by some of the best-skilled talents in the industry at the time. Looking beyond the huge success of the franchise, there were instances where major oversights were made, some of which have been identified by viewers. Like most television series of the era, 
The Adams family had quite a number of these oversights. As charmed as audiences were with the series, there are still many continuity errors, filming gaffes, and several other blunders that managed to get by and onto the screen. Though these things weren't planned, they have now added to the nostalgic charm of a series. There are details that occur between scenes that do not match and create, therefore, inconsistencies. For instance, in the episode Morticia's favorite, Gomez is alternating in immediately consecutive shots where his cigar goes from being lit to unlit, which disrupts the scene flow. In another episode where Morticia just sat, her hands move from being at rest in her lap to being raised in between shots, though she hadn't moved. These minor discrepancies most likely came from the rapid production schedule of television at the time, during the 1960s. Another very common occurrence was camera crew visibility and equipment being within shots when it should not have been seen. In a few episodes where the frame would closely border around the interior shots of the Adams Mansion, there are some instances where a boom microphone or camera crew shadows can be shown in the background. For example, in one episode, Fester's Punctured Romance, a boom mic definitely strays into the shot while Uncle Fester is talking. Of course, many of these technical errors made it past the editing team, probably due to the tight schedules. Also, the program had its share of prop-related mistakes, especially due to the number of offbeat and eccentric items that populated the Adams home. For instance, we saw when an ineffective mechanism caused a sword that Gomez is playing to fail to spring open as it ought, leaving the actor John Aston badly fumbling his way through the scene. A model train set used by Gomez in one of his stunts in the episode Morticia's Romance unexpectedly derailed, adding a comical moment that was unplanned. Prop malfunctions normally remained in the final version of the show since reshoots were always too expensive or simply impracticable. There is also the insufficiency of the set design which was another prominent factor that contributed to noticeable blunders. The Adams Mansion was one of the most iconic facets of the series, and because of the low budgets, several rooms were reused regularly, often merely rearranged to appear different. In The Adams Family Meets the VIPs, the living room is rearranged to resemble a new room, yet any keen observer may see that furniture and other home settings remain the same as in other episodes. Most of the episodes also had faulty use of lighting, resulting in many scenes being poorly lit, sometimes even breaking the horror atmosphere the show wanted to create. This was seen in Morticia's Dilemma, where lighting changed jarringly between cuts creating visual inconsistencies. One might also see the accidental comedy, which came from special effects that did not always work as planned. The perfect example of this will be with Thing, a disembodied hand. Sharp-eyed viewers could catch a glimpse of the actor's arm, hidden behind props or furniture in quite a few episodes, like Thing's romance, which separated it from everything else and made it less convincing that Thing was indeed an independent hand. Such mistakes added unintended playfulness to the series. In fact, these technical blunders, continuity errors, and production goofs did not hurt the Adams family one bit. Rather, they became one part of the series' nostalgic value, reminding viewers of early television's rough-and-tumble pace. Behind it all was the creator, Charles Adams, who took much of his work from his dark sense of humor and macabre fascinations. His bizarre, gothic characters adorned every issue of The New Yorker. His love for the eccentric and ghoulish substantially influenced the creation of such an iconic household full of offbeat, mysterious figures defying convention in suburban life. Among his inspirations is his second wife, Barbara Barb, who is said to have informed the development of the character Morticia Adams. Morticia's pale, haunting beauty, with her calm and controlling nature, strikingly resembled Barbara. Charles Adams died from a heart attack in 1988, but lived on through his works with the numerous adaptations and reruns of The Adams Family. From the success of the original series to films in the 1990s, animated series and more recent adaptations, audiences are always on their toes. By mingling the body with the gruesome, 
Adams created a resilient pop culture piece that is cherished by audiences three generations later. Which adaptation of the Adams Family franchise is your favorite? Let us know in the comments and we will see you in the next one.